In this tutorial video, you'll learn how to take a character model from Daz 3D through Blender into Cura Slicing software. First, let's create a character in Daz 3D. In this case, I'm creating a baby using a pre-existing model. Simply load up the model, which you can then view in the viewport. You don't need to worry about texturing or coloring since your model will be exported in one single color. With Daz 3D, it's easy to adjust the figure into any pose you'd like. Also, use the morphs in various physique controls to get your character's physical dimensions exactly right, including things like you know, length of arms and legs, body mass, and other basic physical characteristics. For this model, I loaded up a dress and some baby accessories like the headband. If you don't obtain accessories designed specifically for your character, um, they may not snap to fit the model, so I suggest getting parts designed for your character that will then match your character geometry exactly right. Especially for things like dress overhangs and sleeves fitting with arms and collars. Although there's a plugin that allow Daz 3D export directly into Blender with all the animation controls intact, I found that manually exporting just as an OBJ and then loading into Blender works just as well. The only thing you'll be sacrificing is the ability to do further body and limb positioning in Blender. Your model will import as a static, finely positioned character. But to be honest, most entry-level artists find it easier to do all the posing and dash. Open Blender anyway. and choose File Import and then select Wavefront OBJ Format. Browse to your file and import it, which should load fairly quickly. At this point, you should preview in wireframe mode so you can make sure all the parts imported like the eyeballs and other internal parts that you may miss in an exterior shaded view. If you want to retain thin geometry like eyelashes, they're going to have to be thickened up prior to 3D printing. For this, you'll need to select the relevant geometry and then add the solidify modifier to make sure the selected geometry is quite a bit thicker. Set the mode as simple, then adjust the decimal values for thickness and offset. I suggest setting them at a starting point of 0.01 each and then adjusting the thickness up or down from there. For geometry like the headband, you want to make sure that it sits flush with the head, with the inside edge penetrating the head geometry, otherwise these floating pieces might not print correctly as they won't be bonded to the head mass. The biggest step comes next, making sure that the model is manifold, which means that the geometry is perfectly wrapped in one continuous skin of geometry with no holes or faces missing in that surface shell. To check for manifold errors, you'll need to install and then open the 3D print plugin panel. Select your geometry parts one by one to check for manifold errors. With a piece of geometry selected, click on the check all button and then in the section labeled result, you need to see if there are any digits next to the non-manifold edge line. If there are, then at the bottom of this panel, click the Make Manifold button. This will then have the Blender plugin run a script that attempts to fix the manifold missing faces automatically. This can take a few minutes. Then to check to see if this solved the problem, unselect the geometry, then reselect it again, and then tap the Check All button again. You should see the non-manifold edge value become a zero. Do this manifold edge check one by one with each part of geometry in your scene. At this point, it's best to save the new Blender file versions of your scene in case you need to go back and fix other problems. Because, you know, from this point on, your geometry will become changed and it's hard to manifold check easily in stages going back. Now we need to increase the smoothness of the final print. To do so, we'll be accessing the subdivision surface modifier to make our mesh denser. You must apply the modifier one by one to each part in the scene. It's recommended to use Catmull Clark for complex curved surfaces. Sometimes the simple setting can be used for machine parts where you want the edge and curves to be less rounded. It's fine to leave the levels viewport and render values 1 and 2 respectively. Remember to apply the modifier by tapping the arrow and then selecting apply. You should then see the wireframe get denser with more faces in the surface of each part. In Blender, you'll see the part shade turn from a mid-gray or, you know, kind of a darker gray to a light gray. To perform the final, what I call bulletproof manifold check step, you'll need to export the model to STL format and open in Microsoft 3D Builder, a free 3D printing program on Windows. I've tried about a dozen different manifold check programs, but none do it as simply and completely as this free little program from Microsoft. 
When you open the STL model, you'll probably see a red box under the model, which indicates that the model still has some manifold errors in it that would cause problems with printing. At the bottom right, you'll see an error warning next to the wrench icon, describing that one or more of the objects in the scene are invalidly defined. Click the button to run the repair process, which is automatic. This can take quite a long time, depending on the size of the STL. Your model from DAS is probably going to be around 100 megabytes, and this can take as long as 10 minutes to process, depending on your PC hardware. Unfortunately, the interface doesn't show this progress very well, so just be patient for the whole process to run. It will then output a new STL file that's corrected. The final stage is to chop the model up into two pieces for FDM printing. You'll find less filament printing errors if you split your model at the waist or kind of around the midpoint and then print in two halves. Blender's Boolean Modify is the best way to perform this split of your model with the ease and control that you need. A simple cube set to difference mode will cleanly slice the model. Then export the two halves to STL format and then load into Cura Slicer to slice up for your filament printer and then you're done. As you import the STL 3D models into Cura, you may find uh, the need to scale the models up a little bit to get the size that you need. Um, I also add extra supports manually in Cura to ensure that uh, the model is correctly supported all the way around. I almost always print my human models with their backs uh, to the build plate so that their faces are facing up to the sky. This makes sure that all the supports are on the back of the model which can be sanded off, leaving the face, eyes and all the detail on the front of the body um, nice and clean when you print. We hope you've appreciated the tips we've shown on this channel. Please subscribe and share this video with family and friends. Thank you.